children the key to our future. Unfortunately, some children are locked out of many opportunities that other children have. That's why there's Family Resource Agency and Tennessee Head Start, offering a range of free services to eligible 3- to 5-year-old children in Bradley, McMinn, Meigs, and Polk Counties. Head Start helps children become ready for school, as well as helping their families become more self-sufficient. Think about it. Doesn't every child deserve a head start in life? For more information, contact Family Resource Agency at 479-9339. This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. Welcome to the Cleveland State Advantage. I'm your host, Jerry Faulkner. And uh, today is casual day on the set because we're not going to spend all of our time <clears throat> on the set today. We're actually going to leave and, and go outside because I'm talking today with Chad Cameron uh, <laughs> about geocaching. Chad is a faculty member in our health and wellness division and director of our uh, fitness center here at the college. So welcome. Mm-hmm. Thanks Thank for you. Thanks for taking time to talk with me about geocaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about just physical education in general. I think some people might be surprised that the college is still teaching physical education courses. Yeah, um, you know, I I really, I really think it was a a unfair and a very unfortunate, really, when TBR removed that that requirement. Um, when I first came here, I started here in 2002, it was a, a requirement. You had to have two hours uh, to go toward your program, and I think it was wonderful. Um, it, it made people get into an activity that might carry throughout their whole life, and, uh, and, and it forced people to, to do that. Now, you know, it may be the only exercise they ever get, is what, is what I'm trying to say. So, um, but yeah, we, we do offer a lot. Um, we have a lot of classes that we do offer here, and I think it's wonderful. And, uh, and a lot of people don't know that we offer those classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was on uh, faculty sub-council at the time they made that change mm-hmm. in, in what we refer to as the general education core, right. uh, the courses that all the students that are transferring to a four-year school have to take. And uh, I was a little dismayed that they removed the physical education requirement yeah. as well. Uh, I mean, uh, at a time when obesity yep. is the number one health problem in the United States, and then we, we took that out of the general education. Yeah, course. well, any list, um, a health type of list, Tennessee is at the wrong end of that spectrum. And to pull that out of the curriculum, I, I think it sent a bad message. I yeah, do. yeah. And, and you mentioned uh, what we're really trying to accomplish with the physical education courses here is uh, lifelong absolutely. activity. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is, you know, what I stress to my students is this isn't something just for this semester. Take this with you. Take it to your family. Take it to your friends outside of the, of the classroom and into your life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned that we offer a pretty broad range of courses. Can you? I don't expect you to list them right. all, but can you give us um, kind of a rundown? Well, I'll start with the ones that I teach. I know those the best, but uh, <laughs> geocaching, we mentioned that one. Uh, I do camping, backpacking, and then I also offer two fitness classes where you come to the fitness center, work out during your own time. Uh, there's a few other small assignments, but you get credit for coming and working out. Uh, on top of those, we have archery. We have a walking class. Um, I think there's a karate class. Uh, mm-hmm. So there's something there for every, everyone. If you, know, if you have some disabilities or some things that won't let you be uh, too strenuous, uh, certainly a walking class, in, you know, nearly anybody can, can walk or, or do the archery. Yeah, yeah, and I think I do. I remember right, we actually 
offer bowling at our Athens uh, I think we do. Campus. Yes, yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. we do at the, at the Athens campus. Yeah, and then uh, actually one of our math teachers, uh, Karen Wyrick, offers a skiing. snow skiing, yep, and, snow skiing. And snowboarding class mm -hmm. uh, over the, the Christmas break. Right. It's actually, I think in, in January is maybe when they go. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. a, neat, that's a neat deal. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And, and we do have still some physical education and recreation majors here at the college, mm -hmm. students that are... Right. Yeah, they, um, there, there is the, the physical education major where they, they can you know, take those courses, go on to the four-year college and, and get their teaching degree. Um, or they can go the route that I took, and it, it's the fitness aspect of it. Uh, they can go out and, and, and get their um, training certification to, to work at the Rush or the YMCA or, or their own fitness facility. So that there's, t there's really two sides uh, to that. Uh, you can go the teaching route or the, the fitness type route. Yeah, and we now have the, the Tennessee Transfer Pathways, those, mm -hmm. those uh, guidelines, those curricula that are laid out. And if you take the prescribed courses here, you're right. guaranteed that all of those courses will we'll transfer go, on right, to the, the anywhere public, public higher education in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, all right, great. Well, let's let's get to geocaching then, because that's the topic of the day. Uh -huh. What is geocaching? I want to know what you know about geocaching. <laughs> what, I, when you when you hear the word geocaching, and do, do you have any idea? Because a lot a lot don't. A yeah. lot of people don't. Yeah. Um, so what what I, what did I, you know? I, I, what I understand about it is that you take a, a GPS mm -hmm. uh, device and you go out in the woods and you look for treasure. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Except I don't know if I'd call it treasure. But, <laughs> but uh, no, I have a shirt uh, at home. I, I think it sums it up pretty well. It says geocaching. I use multi-billion-dollar military satellites to find Tupperware hidden in the woods. That's basically <laughs> geocaching. Uh, yeah. it, it's a high-tech scavenger hunt. Uh, you use a handheld GPS, you go on the website, it's geocaching.com, and um, you pull up the coordinates that someone else has posted, put them into your unit, and go follow it. And when you get there, it'll get you within uh, 10, 20, 30 feet of the actual cache, mm -hmm. uh, and then once you get there, you have to search the area. Uh, it might be in a bush, under a rock, that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, the actual cache is, is just a container. Like I said, it can be Tupperware. It can be very, very small. It can be pretty large. You open it up. There'll be a log book inside of it. You sign your geocaching name, your alias, okay. and um, and you hide it back. Okay. Do you and you do you take something? You leave can. Something? You can. Um, <coughs> it's it's yeah. If the Rule is, if you take something, you put something back equal or greater value. Um, some of the caches have some pretty neat stuff in it. A lot of times it's, it's you know, Happy Meal toys from McDonald's and that sort of thing. <laughs> so the kids really enjoy that part of it. Yeah. After you're into it for a while, though, the, the, the trading is not so much important as it is the actual find. Yeah. And so how does, how does this fit into our, our idea of a lifetime physical activity? Geocaching will take you places that you've never been to before. Uh, it's a great exercise. Uh, my largest and probably my most rewarding cache uh, took two days to find. Uh, it was 10-stage multi-cache, which you find the first stage. It sends you to the next stage and the next stage. And, but two days, and we covered a tremendous amount of territory, uh, walking, hiking, caving. We were crawling around in caves and stuff like that. So it's very, it's very physical. It can be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Understand that some of the caches you pull up to in a car, you get out. You find it, you jump back in the car, and you go. Uh, we call those parking grabs. Okay. Um, those are good for the numbers. If you want to get your stats up, your fines count up. But uh, after a while, those get kind of kind of tiring, kind of boring. So you, you want to get your feet on the ground and hit the trails, and, and that's what I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you mentioned a, a website that you can go to, and, and mm -hmm. are, is there more than one website? or There is. Um, the primary one is www.geocaching.com. Uh, that is the main site. There's a few other small ones that are trying to kind of come in, but I don't think they'll ever be to the point to where that they're overshadowing or even competing with geocaching.com. Okay. And so uh, uh, so if I wanted to, to create a cache mm -hmm. uh, with my Tupperware, I, mm -hmm. would, I would hide it somewhere. 
and then I would do what? There's a few guidelines that you do have to follow when you hide them, and that's to keep people safe. It's also to keep, um, you know, in today's time, terrorism, that sort of thing, there's some, some places you don't want to hide a cache. Yeah. Under uh, a bridge, under a major, yeah. inter, you know, <laughs> under an interstate would not be a good place for yeah. a cache because yeah. the bomb squad would, would be out and, uh, you know, <laughs> that's not good. But the general protocol um, is you hide the cache, you record the coordinates, and you send them to a reviewer. And that's a person that uh, is a volunteer. They do that on their free time uh, for geocaching.com. And their responsibility is to have a general idea of where that cache is located mm -hmm. uh, and make sure it follows within the guidelines. And then if it does, then it will be published to the website. So there is a reviewing process. You can't just go and hide one and, and, and expect it to be there. Yeah. It okay. Has to, has to be published. Okay. All right. And then anybody in the world can go on this website. Absolutely. And, and get the coordinates for if my cache if mm -hmm. I created one. How, uh, do you have an estimate of how many there are? Caches? Uh, yeah. Uh, the last time I checked, there was 1.2 million. Worldwide? Worldwide. Wow. Yeah. And, and just around Cleveland? Are there just around like Cleveland, I would say between 200 and 250. Just wow. Just in, in, within Cleveland. Okay. A lot in the Cherokee National Forest? Uh, yes. Uh, each, each area has its own rules. Uh, state parks, you know, some allow it, some don't. Okay. Uh, National Forest has their rules, so uh, there are some in there, but th they do have to be um, like labeled, and, and there's some there's some specifics there that that they require. Okay, and those are all the kinds of things they could they could learn if they took your class. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go to a break, let let's talk a little about your classes. It offered. Both semesters, just in the fall semester? It's or? offered uh, spring and fall Okay, both uh, for, for the geocaching. Yeah. And the fitness courses are offered uh, during the summer as well. Yeah, okay, all right. Yep. So uh, we're going to take a break now, and when we come back from break, we're going to be out in the woods uh, looking for a cache, <laughs> doing some geocaching. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. children the key to our future. Unfortunately, some children are locked out of many opportunities that other children have. That's why there's Family Resource Agency and Tennessee Head Start, offering a range of free services to eligible three to five-year-old children in Bradley, McMinn, Meigs, and Polk counties. Head Start helps children become ready for school as well as helping their families become more self-sufficient. Think about it. Doesn't every child deserve a head start in life? For more information, contact Family Resource Agency at 479-9339. Okay, welcome back to the Cleveland State Advantage. Uh, during that break, we've moved locations. We've moved out of the studios into the wilds of downtown Cleveland or <laughs> near downtown Cleveland. And my guest today again is Chad Cameron, a uh, faculty member in our health and wellness division. And we're talking about geocaching. 
uh, which is one of the courses that we teach in our physical education offerings here at the college. So, uh, Chad, you've, you've got something in your hand there. What's that? This is the uh, handheld GPS. Um, of course, a lot of phones now have the applications you can use. I still prefer the GPS. Uh, it's just what I'm used to, and that's what I like to use. But uh, this particular one is a DeLorme PN40. Um, I've used this for several years. I really like it. Uh, there's a lot of others out there, Garmin's and, and other things like that, but I, I like this one pretty well. Okay, and uh, let's, let's first of all define for folks what is GPS. It's Global Positioning uh, Satellites and, uh, or Systems. And uh, basically, at all times, there's satellites rotating the Earth. Um, and right now, this unit is looking for those. Uh, it searches at least four. Once it finds four satellites, then it has a 3D lock, um, which generally would get you within you know, 10 to 20 feet of a cache. Okay, and so uh, you mentioned your, in the first segment, you mentioned your uh, shirt that talks about military. So these satell satellites were originally for the military. Yes, um, in May, I believe it was May of 2000, uh, they turned off the selective availability of the satellites, which that basically made it available to us. Uh, it was originally for the military, and once they turned that off, now we have access to that. Okay, and this is this is the same system you mentioned cell phones, but this is the same system that uh, works in your in your car if you have one of those uh, mapping guiding systems. Yes, absolutely, same satellites, uh, same deal. In fact, you, this one has road routing capabilities. It's not quite as good at routing or routing on the road as your Garmin, you know, in your in your car, but it will do it. Okay, and and now you, the satellites are up above us and before we uh, before we opened up the segment you were kind of waving that thing around and up and down and turn it over so what was that all about uh, we, we call that De the DeLorme dance and uh, basically what I was doing is calibrating the compass um, when you are actually moving and, and around it picks up on the satellites but when we're sitting still right here it will also route by um, by compass and uh, so when you calibrate that it, it'll also help you um, the the best uh, way to do it though is to actually move around with the unit okay actually walk around a little bit and get get things way, going way, it can, it can uh, find where it's at yeah okay now we're about to go back under the trees here is that going to affect the satellite reception yeah you'll, you'll there's several things here you got trees you have towers right up here on the hill um, not too many clouds today, so that shouldn't be a factor. But trees will definitely be a factor. Uh, but it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't hurt us too bad. Okay. And and uh, topography, like if you're at the bottom of a really deep gorge. Yeah, cliffs. Um, certainly, if if you're in the bottom of a canyon or something like that, you're going to have a hard time with satellite reception. But that makes things funner. Okay. All right. Well, you've uh, you've uh, put in the coordinates mm -hmm. for the geocache that we're looking for. Yep. And that's in latitude and longitude? Yes, yes. It, it Just the same coordinates as they use, like I said, if you're going in your car or the military uses. Um, it's it's in, you know, north and west. Um, so if I can pull this one up, I'll tell you the exact. Uh, let's see. We are going 35 degrees, 12.013. And that's north, and then west is 0 .084 degrees, 53.025. Okay, all right. So uh, let's see if I remember right. Latitude are imaginary lines that run north, uh, that run east-west, and tell you your location north of the equator. Yes. And longitude are imaginary lines that run north-south and tell you your location east or west of the prime meridian something like that my fifth <laughs> my fifth grade teacher would be so proud <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, a mind-boggling deal but but um, luckily the gps does it for us yeah okay and so again these coordinates would be available on the on the website yes on the website you do have to have a membership set up in order to access those but the, uh, there's two memberships there are free membership and there's a premium membership um, I cashed my first year or two with a basic membership, very doable. So if you just want to get out there and get your feet wet, try it out, it won't cost you anything other than, you know, maybe a, a GPS unit. 
Okay, and I, and uh, you look like you were actually searching through some stored locations. Yeah, I have uh, I have several geocaches loaded up on here, and uh, most units will hold up to a thousand. So uh, you can you can store them on here. And uh, one of the benefits of being a premium member is that you can actually go to an area and say you're going out of town, say you're going to Chattanooga for the day, you can search Chattanooga and it'll pull up 1,000 caches in Chattanooga. And with one click, it will put all of those caches in here. That, that's a premium member feature. Wow, okay. Well, we're, we're synced with the satellites. Uh, we've got the coordinates of our cache. And so are we ready to go, go find it? Uh, I'm ready, are you ready? I'm ready, yeah, now let's do this. Okay, follow the uh, blue arrow. Okay, so on, on the screen here, there's like a compass face and a blue arrow, and so I just, uh, I just walk the direction the blue arrow points. That's it. Okay, so it says I should go this way. Okay, let's see if we can find it. <laughs> okay, so... The, uh, the GPS is telling me that the treasure, the cache, is somewhere right over there. Uh, can, you, can you see it, Chad? Can you, yeah, oh, I see it. It's in the, in the branch of the tree there. Could you grab it out for us? Okay, so uh, it's just, a, just like a, a film canister or a little, little plastic container. Log. Okay, inside is the log. So, so let's see. Wow. Here's a uh, list of all the finders. Yeah. It's actually full. Actually full. Yeah, probably like 40 people have been to this site uh, looking for this geocache. So, uh, and so you actually sign your uh, your geocaching handle, <laughs> your yeah. alias. Yeah, you have a uh, have a geocaching name. Mine is uh, Hoopy Hide. And uh, just a little side note on that name, my memo, when we would hide, when I was living, we played hide and seek in her house, uh, she'd get on to us, quit playing hoopy hide in the house. So uh, that's kind of where my name come from. And, uh, and so, yeah, we, we try to be creative with our names. Okay, so it is kind of a, kind of a high-tech hide and seek game here. That's absolutely. Um, you did good. Okay, well, it, this, one, this one wasn't too hard, but you were... Uh, you were telling me on the ride up here that uh, they can be really complicated. Yeah, it's um, they're they're on a rating system. Uh, this one is rated, I think, like a two, two and a half, and uh, simply because it's a little bit of terrain having to get in here. The find itself was not so hard, even though it is it's a smaller uh, cache than most. But I think this one's rated about a two, two and a half. I've found them up to a five, five, which is the hardest rating. Um, normally, those can take up to you know two days, three days to find. Okay, and, and you mentioned back in the studio sequential hides. Yeah, those are called multicaches. Um, if this were a multicache, they would be coordinates listed in here, and uh, you would write those coordinates down, put them in your unit, and you'd have to go to stage two, uh, maybe three, stage four, stage five, however many stages there are. I think the biggest one I've done is a like a 10 or 11 stage, and that was that 5-5. Five, five. Okay, and, and uh, you sometimes use this as part of your vacation? I do. Uh, one of the funnest things that I like to do on my vacation is you go and, and, you know, sometimes the family comes with you. Sometimes they're not so much into it as I am. But I'll tell them, hey, you know, I'm going out for today. And uh, it's just a great way to go and um, to a new area and, and find the local hot spots because a lot of times the, the locals will hide it in areas that they want you to see. So, uh, so you'll see some things that your normal traveler wouldn't find. Okay. All right. What else can you tell us about geocaching that we need to know? Uh, well, at this point, just kind of go th what the process would be now is you would sign your geocaching name uh, on this list and uh, any other, uh, you know, comments you want to make, nice, fine, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, also put the date and then you would hide it back just the way you found or better because sometimes you get here and maybe the animals have knocked it out of the trees or, or a person has got a hold of it and you'll find them just you know scattered on the ground so if that's the case that's normally not where it's hidden so you try to try to hide it back um, better than you found it um, at that point you go back to your computer uh, you will log it on the website 
And uh, so that's, that's the other aspect of it is you go to the, the geocaching website, log your find there, and it keeps up with your stats and your finds on there. And, and so if, if you've got a cache and, and uh, uh, have created one, you can go to the website and see how many people have found your cache. Absolutely, yeah. I can, I can go there right now and uh, pull up all the comments that people have, have made about my cache and, and keep up with who's found it. And, and uh, there's a lot of revisits, you know, like, like you'll come and find it and you'll bring your friends to come find it. So you come back and you, you revisit a cache too. Yeah. Okay. And so there's a there's a kind of a big social component to this as well. There is. Um, I, some of my best friends are cashers. Uh, there's actually events, uh, and it's it's considered a cash. You get a fine for going to an event. Um, there's not so many in Cleveland. I don't know why, but in Chattanooga, there's a lot of events. You go and you might meet at a restaurant or something like that with other cashers, and uh, you get a fine for that, and just just like a, a local gathering. Yeah, and, and they're they're like clubs as well because I know I've seen on on uh, the highway, the adopt a highway sign where the geocachers of so and so have adopted that particular section of a highway. Yeah, uh, Chattanooga, like I said, Cleveland for whatever reason don't necessarily have that yet. I don't don't know why, uh, but but Chattanooga definitely has a club out there. Um, they're very very active. And and one thing I want to mention, you you mentioned the highway signs, is that there's a very very close tie between geocaching and conservation. Uh, and I mentioned the the events that you get you get fines for that. There's one called a CITO, and that's cash in trash out. And uh, that is also considered a find. And you'll go, they may have a meeting at a, at a creek bed or something. You clean up that creek bed, uh, spend a day of giving service, and you get a find for that too. All right, great. Well, we're, we're definitely not going to move this piece of trash out today, but, but, but uh, what a great idea. What a great idea. Okay, well, and so I uh, appreciate you showing us this and sharing this with us, and uh, I know there will be some folks uh, that are viewing this that will be interested in taking your class uh, and so if they wanted to contact you and find out more about the class where would they call they could call me uh, in the fitness center it's uh, area code 423-614-8712 uh, or you can email me at c cameron and that's at clevelandstatecc.edu all right. Well, thanks again for visiting with us today and sharing with us about geocaching. And I, uh, I may just have to get me one of these things. And uh, uh, how much are they? They range. Uh, you, you can you can go down here. You can go up here. Uh, this is definitely my recommendation on a unit, and this one will run you uh, about two fifty. Okay, well, I'll have to check in with the misses and get the budget approval, but uh, it's an exciting hobby and, again, a great activity to get you out of doors and uh, hiking as much as you want to hike. You can be, I guess, as physical as you want to or as non-physical as you want to. Yeah, so That's the good thing about the rating system is that you can uh, pick and choose your caches. Uh, if I'm with my little girl, you know, obviously I'm not going to go for a 5.5 five cash or a 4.4. Four four. I'm going to go for a 1.1 one one or a 2.2, two two. Some, something simple for her. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Well, thanks again for talking with us. Uh, this brings us to the end of another uh, edition of the Cleveland State Advantage. We'll see you again soon. Hi, I'm Michael Strahan with PETA. When I'm not playing defense for the New York Giants, I'm protecting the home team, my girls Tasha, Katie, and Stella. During the cold winter months, dogs left chained outside can suffer from frostbite and hypothermia, as well as stress and loneliness. Your dog depends on you for love and protection. So bring them inside, take them for walks, 
Make them a part of your pack. In other words, be your dog's biggest defender. Thanks. A child's mind can take in more during the preschool years than at any other time. What better reason to donate a little of your own?